All right, hello everyone, and especially Ed. I'm sorry it's taken so long to make a video update on the Schnabel progress. This has just been a very challenging extra little feature that I haven't done before. Maybe I should admit that, <clears throat> but uh, there's probably a good reason. A lot of a lot of danger involved with this. A lot of fear. And, you know, trying to build a mental image on exactly what it is I want to do. Of course, here you are looking at where I'm at right now. So you see what I have been shaping. And, and let me explain to you how I've come by this and, and the challenges. This side doesn't have a very clearly defined line yet, so this needs to be worked. It, it all actually needs a lot more work. So we got a flat spot here. We need to get rid of that. Uh, we're a little bit proud of the end of the breech block here. That's on purpose. <clears throat> I want to creep up on it. And I'm not sure if I really want to match it exactly because when you're trying to match something exactly, if it doesn't turn out exact, if it's a little bit short or a tiny bit long, then it makes it look like you missed the goal. And if it's off a fair amount in the positive direction, I mean, clearly if it was short, that'd be a bummer. But if it's a little bit long, it's going to look like it was intended to be that way and not like it missed it by a tiny bit. So, you know, I don't know, and I'm open for your opinion on uh, what I ought to do about that. And then, you know, this, the way that I've got this curving, it's, uh, you know, it's going to come out uh, beyond the edge of the breech block, even if this edge touches. And I suppose the curve could have gone like from there down, but then that might have exposed the bottom of it a little bit. <clears throat> well, mainly how I've come up with this curve is because how I shaped this after a great deal of thought, and, and ultimately I could only use a method that involved tools that I have or could acquire. And so I have this scary looking tool. Uh, this is the coarse one, and I think they're like ninety dollars. I didn't check. I, you know, I wish I had a fine one to go along with this coarse one, but uh, it's well would have been a lot of money for one job, and so I'm just I just went carefully. <clears throat> but this has a uh, let me get some room here. You know, this has the uh, diameter that I liked. Uh, it's got this curve shape here that gave us the curve here, but of course the danger is this melts wood. I mean like butter. And if I had cut too far down uh, below this level, that would have been death on the project. Uh, so, you know, the lightest little touch can melt the wood away. And while you're looking on one spot, another spot could be, you know, wood could be disappearing. You don't know it. So, you know, I did a lot of practices and screwing up in my courage and finally did it. And actually, I think I need to do a little bit more. And then I didn't go very far down with it, just developed a shape because of fear of going too far. And so then that meant trying to take down this curving, you know, it was curving up way too early, you know, way back here it was curving up. And so that had to be taken down flat all the way to there and it's actually not quite done. It still has a little bit of a rise there that I'd like to get down flatter. So I cut a, a plywood disc, uh, put an edge, a rounded edge on it, <clears throat> 3M77, some sandpaper to it. But coarse sandpaper won't conform to the shape. I mean this, uh, I think this is 120, you know, barely conforms to it. And so, you know, I was working it like this trying to <clears throat> work this level down and maintain that shape and sharpen up this edge and yeah that just doesn't really work and I thought about uh, chucking this somehow and being able to spin it I don't know that seems kind of sketchy so then I was using uh, just a regular uh, a little sanding block here and this did a pretty good job of getting down a lot of that extra height which is still exists, but you know, I got a lot of it down like that. Let me get the action out of the way, which by the way is still covered in wax, so if it doesn't look good in the video, that's why there's nothing wrong with it. It's in a heated safe. I'm going to get it back down in there. One more look here, and I'll go put the action away, and let me turn it over so you see the other side again. 
and hopefully that's giving you a good perspective on its appearance. And here, let me just turn it around and try to catch the light in different angles. And you can see it from this side. And, and you can see that this side is way too fat. Still, I need to remove a lot of material from this side to make it match that side. Um, the reason this is uh, smaller is it's just how the uh, master had to be aligned in the blank. This, this is what we got. And I left all the available wood all the way around in the Schnabel area, which meant on one side there was excess wood. So this, this is a section that needs some pretty significant attention. And you can see here this angle if you can see that angle there, this is what's got to be taken down so that it's at the same plane, if you see what I'm talking about. And that's just really tricky, you know, to do that with a, a power tool, boy, that's scary. Go too far, the project's hosed. So I'm just working it by hand and taking my time at it. I mean, that's no profitable way to do a project, but I assure you, when it's done, it will be perfect. But it's just, it's just taken a while, and I probably need to just use some horsepower to help speed it along because it's not going all that great right now. See, there's another little difference there I ought to adjust. It's like a little more gap on this side than on this side, so I need to give this a little bit more of a gap. It's not too bad. It's probably got a little bit of excess splue in the... Uh, the bolt hole. No, I don't think so. This is a nice tight fit right here. It's just going to be what it is. I just need to open that up a little bit to match that. So, yeah, that's uh, basically it. So let me take the, get the action out of the way here. Let me go stick it in the safe real quick. <clears throat> Got in the habit every time I go in the safe, close and lock it because uh, don't want to risk uh, leaving the shop and forgetting that it's open. I got a security camera shining on it so I can check from my phone. Did I close the safe? Anyway, let me show you over here the other tool that I've been using and its danger. So I got this cheap, uh, smaller belt sander. I use a big one usually for shaping the forearms. And really, this, this whole process, which has been going on for, I don't know, a month or two now, probably a couple months, it's just because of the schnabel. Usually, when I shape the forearm, it's minutes. It's just minutes on the, on the big belt sander, and I just roll it around and shove it in both sides and make it nice and smooth and round. And I can't do that with the schnabel. Here's why. The hard end roller. Right, so I got this little guy just for this job, so that um, oh, it's it's uh, turned around backwards at the moment here. <clears throat> but the idea, well, maybe it's not. I just picked it up off the floor and st stuck it on the table here. But when you turn this sideways, there now you can see. So if I'm going to try to shape the forearm like this, and you see it just fits, right? That's great. But because this is a hard roller, it actually will overcut this. It doesn't matter if you're flat on this. This roller will, up, uh, will overcut the work at the end. And in fact, you can, maybe you can see it is a little bit overcut. And I'm going to have to shape this all down to that level. I can't do it with horsepower. I got to do it by hand with a sanding block. So it's just, you know, all the sides here, because this is here, and I can't put it like this, or it'll get an un overcut thing from the roller. So this entire side has to be done by hand with a sanding block. So what would normally be maybe five minutes to completely shape and finish the forearm is weeks of manual labor. It'll come out fine, but I'm not in a hurry to do a schnabel again. There's probably, you know, some, maybe people can comment in the comments section on some power tool method that I could do to uh, make this uh, faster if I were to do it again. 
but right now I just got to work with what I got and the, and the skill and tools that I have. So uh, this area is still pretty rough right here and it's going to have to be smoothed out and have to be uh, sanded fair, shaped I should say. I mean it's going to be take some pretty significant shaping here to get that fair. Now I see on some firearm schnabels, they've gone ahead and allowed this to happen. And, and it's like undercut all the way around. So it's almost like they've turned um, an aspect of manufacturing into a feature. But this is not a firearm forearm. You know, on, on the traditional schnabels that we see on firearm stocks, they're very skinny at the end. And they're a very delicate little shape. And this thing's just massive by the nature of the stock that uh, a brake barrel uh, air gun has. And I know there are some examples out there, and Ed and I uh, uh, shared some pictures. I reviewed those prior to doing this. I know you want uh, small, uh, you know, as small as can be. So anyway, to that end, while I can take this down a little bit more, because we're a little bit proud of the end of the breech block, this curve also really needs to go more that way, because I don't want a flat spot here. I really want it to curve here and continue curving right into this. So this ought to be just the top of that arc and not a flat spot. So this curve needs to go that way more. This needs to come a little bit that way until they meet with a nicely rounded shape. So that's the goal. And you see your little divot there. I'm going to have to work this whole area. So you see why, well I hope you understand why this is just taking so long because it's just like, dang, it would have been five minutes if it weren't for this feature and now it's just like a ton of labor and a ton of time and I keep having to do other things to make money. But I don't have any other gun stock projects. Nobody wants to pay a thousand bucks for, a gun, uh, for an air gun stock and I just i am not going to do it for $400 anymore. It's just ridiculous. Everybody else that was doing it before me was charging that kind of price and they all went out of business. And I know why. You can't work for 100 hours for $400. So, you know, I know, Ed, thank you very much. You're, you're up there at the, my eleven fifty five price and you spent a, a few or $400 on this beautiful piece of English. I mean, for an air gunner, you know, 1500 bucks or more, that's just a, that's a lot of money to spend to pretty up a BB gun, right? But... Uh, it's it's a lot of labor so well in any case I'm not complaining I'm really happy about the project I'm happy how it's coming out and I just really wish that I could have you know <laughs> this were a normal gun stock I this had been long gone out of my shop by now I'd be making my own stock for my Air Arms S510 my new turkey gun which I'd love to have it stocked for this turkey season but I don't think I'll get there anyhow See a couple other details I got to work on here. That's the thing. I'm going to use that. Uh, here, let me move you back over here. Don't get dizzy. Um, I'm going to use the uh, this scary tool to move this back. I did try using the end of drum sanders and shape this. I also have these really awesome um, saber bits. And uh, I tried doing a little bit of shaping with that, but it's just fraught with danger. You know, this, this melts wood just like this. It's the same company that makes these things. You know, if this goes down this direction too deep, <laughs> where the project's done, right? I mean, done as in fail. So, just got to be careful. I was going to film a little bit of me trying to move that forward. I'm going to have to get my head down low and just watch it and be real careful. But frankly, I just don't want the extra uh, stress of uh, having you guys watch me try to do this. And I'm going to go really slow and careful and watch what's going on and continue to check it with my fingers and feel what's going on. So I'm not going to subject you to that. But I just want you to know, Ed, I am working on it. And it's just a challenge for me. Maybe people will comment and I'll come up with uh, a better way of doing the shape, some other kind of tooling maybe that uh, will allow it to happen quick. But uh, I feel confident in my ability to uh, produce something that's going to look really good and uh, be a successful project. It's just going to take some time, just manual labor time and a lot of thinking and screwing up my courage, which is embarrassing to admit. 
but that's just how I am. Uh, I just, every time I'm like, you know what, I'm on a time gun, just get it done, get it done, do it right now. Just don't worry about it, don't have any fear, just grab the tools and make it happen. Yeah, that never works out well. I'm much better at, you know, it's like with uh, aviation, they say uh, half the time spending the airplane is uh, leaning up against the door jam, looking at it and thinking. And that's kind of what I got going on here. Aviation is one of my hobbies. So, tell me what you think yet on the shape. Is this kind of the direction you were hoping for? And man, I'm not really happy with this. It's just going to, I'm just going to... I'm just going to spend an hour here and wail on it with uh, some hand tools and improve the shape and get this curved up a little bit better. Lower this level down so it more closely matches this side. We got to remove some material from that side. I'm on it, Ed. All right, everybody. Be good to yourselves. Don't breathe anybody's sneezes. Michael out.